Hi everyone and welcome to this detailing video. So I'd like to start off by explaining what I'm going to talk about and what I'm not going to get into great detail on. So this video is designed to be a supplement to our modules in our first period apprenticeship training. So what I'm going to discuss mostly is some tips and tricks for detailing the interiors of vehicles. But I am going to start off with a few points on the exterior. So when we wash the exterior of the vehicle, it's important that we use hot water. When we look at the physics of uh, water, the thermodynamics, the thermal energy of water is much greater when it's hot. The molecules are vibrating and moving more, they're also spread out greater. And what that does is it creates a big change in the surface tension of that water, which allows that water to penetrate underneath dirt and grime, lift that grime up, grime up and have that grime wash away from the vehicle. Uh, and then when you add soap to that equation too, it works very well. So that's why it's important to use that hot water. When we wash the exterior of the vehicle, we want to rinse it really well. Make sure we get all the areas underneath the vehicle, get the wheel wells, anywhere else that you may have to mask to later on in the body shop. And when we're washing with the soap, it's a good idea to start at the bottom, work your way up. However, keep in mind how dirty is the rag or the uh, cloth that you're using? Are you gonna take uh, any dirt or debris and scratch the paint as you go? So make sure you're rinsing frequently. With the exterior wash, rinse it really well and uh, allow it to dry. So you may want to squeegee the vehicle dry. And you can use a chamois if you'd want uh, instead. And make sure that we're watching for water spots because any water that has minerals in it, like what we have here in our region in southern Alberta, the minerals will dry on the vehicle leaving deposits and on dark vehicles this is very noticeable and can be very difficult to remove. So if we can squeegee the water or get the water off as best we can before it sits outside, that would make a better finish for us. Next, let's talk about the interior. Um, but before we go into that, I want to touch on one more thing coming up. And in the next slide, we're going to talk about under hood. But one thing with the interior that I do want to touch on right now is the order. What order do we wash? Outside in, inside out? It really doesn't matter provided you have a good plan. In a lot of uh, shops where production is important, they do find that it can be much quicker to wash the outside of the vehicle. And then while the outside is drying, uh, clean the inside with the vacuuming, etc. When pressure washing under the hood, we must avoid certain areas that include Electrical connectors, the air intake assembly. On the other side of this car, we'll see the battery and the battery terminals. We'll also note that there's a power distribution box or fuse box in many cases. This one has a PCM, power control module, so watch out for those. And those could be in various areas. And then underneath the hood itself, there could be an insulator pad that could be destroyed by the high pressure. As we move to the interior, we'll start vacuuming. One good tip is to use a blower to blow into the vacuum to help release some debris. Be careful not to use high pressure and do not blow any fabric or upholstery in the vehicle. Some things can be very stubborn to remove from fabric or some fabrics can be very difficult to clean. In which case, a roller like this or simply using masking tape wrapped around your hand can do a great job at removing hair and other debris. Alternately, uh, if you want a really good stick, you can use duct tape for this process. As we progress with the cleaning of the interior, we're going to use a number of different brushes for cleaning the hard plastic trim. In this case, a toothbrush with soft bristles can do an excellent job of cleaning dirty speaker grills. You may want to use a vacuum first because we do not want to push debris in, rather suck it out, and then use a brush like this to finish up. What we have here is a little bit of water with some mild detergent and we'll use that on cleaning the rest of the hard plastic trim as well. So here we have a rag. We will use the rag to wipe down the trim and if that does not do a sufficient job of cleaning the hard trim then we can go back and use a brush to brush some of these areas. Again making sure you have a bristle that is firm enough to remove any debris but soft enough not to scratch or damage any of the plastic of the interior. And here we can even use it on the rubber door opening weather strip. And again, go back with the rag. You'll have to allow these items to dry before you know if they're fully clean or not. And you may have to go back several times to complete this cleaning stage. As we continue with the vacuuming, we want to use a high powered vacuum to clean the interior, which will make the cleaning process much easier. Utilize the separate attachments for your vacuum and use the appropriate sized ends to get into all the different areas that you need to get into. If you need to, you can remove all the ends and just use the vacuum end open. 
Also make sure that we move the seats all the way back and forwards and vacuum under those areas. Also note how all of the floor mats have been removed from this vehicle to allow for proper vacuuming. This headliner is relatively clean but does have one spot here. Headliners can be very challenging to clean as they do show lots of marks easily, especially when they're light in color, as is this one. I'm using a rag that is lightly dampened with water, or you may use a mild detergent and then dab the area or blot the area to try and remove any dirt or debris. You'll have to let the area dry and recheck it when it's dry to see if it is clean, and you may need to repeat the process. One commonly overlooked step is to turn the HVAC system on and blow out the ductwork. So all you need to do is turn the heater or the air conditioning on and turn the blower fan up on the maximum speed and then select each of the different functions and let them blow for a few moments. That can help blow any debris or dirt that was there previously as well as any debris or dirt that got into the ductwork during the repair process at the body shop. This is a very common problem that does occur so it is advisable that during the repair process, you tape or cover the heating duct areas to ensure we don't get debris inside of these. The last thing we'd want is for debris to blow up at the customer's face when they're driving the car away. Seatbelts can become contaminated with various substances. In this case, it's just dirt, and that can be removed with a rag lightly dampened with water or a water and mild detergent solution. Wipe or dab the seatbelt clean. If this does not come clean, do not use any harsh cleaners or solvents. If that is the case, replace the seatbelt as a safety precaution and also check the seatbelt for any damage or fraying. On occasion, we may need to remove gum from a vehicle. When gum is in carpet or upholstery, it can be very difficult to remove. So to aid in the removal, we can soak the gum with a rag dampened with water and the water can help to soften uh, the old dried up gum. If that is not gonna work very well for you, what we can do is take ice, place ice over the gum area for a little while, and what the ice is gonna do is cool the gum, and the gum will become harder, and as it becomes harder and more brittle, it may become easier to remove. So if we are using water, use cold water, otherwise use the ice and try to freeze the gum to remove the gum from the upholstery. Keep dabbing, uh, and in this case, we're blotting it, and as we've used the ice, it's cooled down, and it's coming out of the carpet quite nicely. If blood needs to be removed, we can dab the blood up if it's fresh. If the blood is old, we'll still use a very similar process, and what we'll do is we'll take a dampened rag and blot the areas. Make sure you use cold water anytime you're dealing with blood. The reason being is that the hot water actually coagulates the blood, making it much more difficult to remove. So use cold water, blot these areas to remove the blood completely, and then you can go back with a product that will sanitize those areas, something that will remove any potential uh, pathogens or microbacteria that could be harmful to yourself or someone else at a later point. Make sure to discard of all the rags and any debris from the cleaning process in a safe manner. This is definitely an area that is a safety concern, so make sure that you're following all precautions with these processes. When you're dealing with this, you're also not necessarily aware what kind of blood it is. It could be human or animal, and in and of that, there are some safety concerns that need to be considered. You may want to refer to occupational health and safety standards when dealing with any biohazard material inside a vehicle or anything inside the vehicle that you feel may be a safety concern. Remember, in Alberta, you have the right to refuse unsafe work. And if you feel you're not properly trained and you don't have the proper equipment and supplies to deal with cleaning up these materials, refuse that work and have someone who is qualified perform that cleaning process for your shop. One area where a lot of people struggle is glass cleaning. Here we're seeing the glass being cleaned and the trick here is to have a good foaming glass cleaner and two rags. One rag is being used to wipe at the scrubbing and wet stage and the second one will be used in a few moments for the buffing afterwards. So using that wet rag, I am scrubbing the window very well, making sure that I get all debris wiped off of there, allowing that cleaner to penetrate and lift any issues. Now I'm taking the dry rag and I'm buffing or polishing the glass. So although the glass is dry now, I'm still trying to buff and polish and get the last little bit of issues out of there. That will prevent streaks afterwards. Once I'm done with the inside of the glass, I will repeat the same process on the outside. 
So here I'll come to the outside, spray the foaming glass cleaner over the outside of the glass, allowing the foaming glass cleaner a few moments to work in. Taking the wet rag, wiping the glass very well, so scrub that glass quite well with that wet rag, making sure that as we're going, we're working in one direction. So rather than going vertical and horizontal on a cross hatch, try to only go in one direction, in this clay case mostly vertical. Of course, edges you'll have to go otherwise. Then take the dry rag and perform the buffing or polishing procedure to finish this step off. Afterwards, make sure you have a good inspection of the glass, as we can see coming up here, and touch up any areas. Once you're done with the glass, roll the window down and make sure to wipe the edges. There's always going to be a little edge of dirt that needs to be cleaned off, as we can see in this picture here. Also remember to wipe the wiper blades as the wiper blades themselves get very dirty underneath and when you have a clean windshield and turn the wiper on it can actually dirty the windshield immediately after. Towards the end of the cleaning process make sure to wipe out all the door jams and make sure to wipe out the door side as well and repeat this process for any other openings such as hatches, liftgate, tailgate, underhood areas as well. There are many appropriate cleaning products that can be used to clean the vehicle. One of the best items to use, however, is water with a mild detergent. That can be used for many interior items as it's very unlikely to damage anything or leave any residue behind. What we don't want to use is any harsh chemicals or cleaners as we can see here. Avoid solvents or anything that could be a contaminant for the body shop that contains silicone or of course any other type of contaminants. Thank you for watching and I hope this will help with your detailing process in the future.